and the Y component of the motion. OK, but. And they are not they are not affecting each other like X company, Y company are not affecting each other and you will see it why because whose mic is on? Your mic is on. Uh, oh, sir, sir, you, yes, you, sir. Can, you can mute him. I think that was, uh, I was not seeing who is that guy, but. OK. OK. Now here, look at the, the uh, diagram. In this diagram, we have two kinds of motion. One is the. One is the horizontal as we discussed in the animations and one is the vertical motion. When we combine them, we are getting a curve path and that path is the projectile motion discussing here. So we know that whenever we are discussing a vector, obviously we discussed that the if there is a curve path, the velocity of will be always tangent to that curve path, right? So if this is the curve path of the projectile, so the, the direction of the velocity is going to be tangent to it. So let's say I take it, I take it as a V naught. And if this curve path was initial, the angle it was making with respect to X axis, it is called theta naught. So here I have two components. One is the X component like this, which is V naught X. And another component, the Y component like this, which is V naught Y. Can someone tell me what will be the V naught X component here in terms of the cosine and sine? The magnitude yeah. and. Uh, it will be V naught cosine theta naught. Theta. Yeah. And similarly, V naught sine theta naught. So, another thing I miss, I discussed here that there is acceleration along the Y axis and there is no acceleration along the horizontal axis. So no acceleration along horizontal axis means that in the entire motion, in the entire projectile motion from its flight to the landing point, the X component of the velocity will remain the same, which will be V naught cosine theta naught. But since there is acceleration along the Y axis, therefore the Y component of the velocity will be different at any different instant of time. So I have a question. Yes. Is there a point that uh, V not uh, that I mean uh, the uh, vertical V will be zero? Yes, when when the object goes to the topmost point, you see that the object stop a little bit momentarily along Y axis, right? That's where the the velocity V Y is going to be zero there. Okay. Yeah. So. We are formulating the equations and since we are discussing the constant accelerations situations, so either the acceleration is zero, which is also considered constant, either acceleration is G, which is also constant. So therefore the equation that we had derived for the constant acceleration cases, they are still applicable. The same way as we were using for the free fall, just replacing A by minus G. Here in the projectile motion, we will be also using the same equations by the constant acceleration, but we'll be replacing A by minus G. And there will be one more minor detail starting to appear here. And that is because, like when you look at this first equation, X minus X naught equal to V naught T. This was the only equation we used to discuss. But now in the previous slide, you are seeing that I say uh, V naught X is equal to V naught cosine theta. So therefore, you see this this component we are splitting in the form of v naught x and the cosine theta naught. This is the only change here that will be new to you. But along y axis, we are again using the y minus y naught equal to uh, initial component of the velocity times t minus half g t square. The same equation that we have been using for the free fall. Okay, but now, again, we will be taking the points from the previous slide, like V naught, V naught Y is equal to V naught sine theta naught. So therefore, we will be using, replacing this by those uh, trigonometric function as well as the 
V0. That's the only change that we want to have here. Another thing you guys know that there was an equation that Vy is equal to V0 uh, V not y, right? Minus gt. This was another equation for the constant acceleration cases. So again, V not y will be substituted by this, okay? So V not x started to appear. And there was another equation which was V square equal to V not square minus 2gs. And then again, the only change is the V not sine theta naught. Nothing else. There is no more change. Only thing what we made is that the V naught X we replaced by V naught cosine theta naught, and the V naught Y we replaced it by V naught sine theta naught. Do you have any question here? Any complication here? Because we will be building uh, ideas built based on this uh, these equations. Uh, teacher. Yes. Uh, Vy equal uh, Vy or Vx. Vy? This equation, uh, this equation you wrote. Uh-huh. Vy v equal v Vy or uh, v v y. Not y. y. Okay. This, this point here. V not Y minus GT. So V not Y is the, is this is the V not sine theta naught. That's what we derived in the previous slide, if you remember, like this. Like these are the, the two equations that we are just using in the uh, coming two equations. OK, one more uh, in terms of the equation. Sometime it could also happen that we may not know the time. We throw a rock in the air. The rock goes from my hand back to the back to the land. But during this time, I didn't I was unable to record its time for the flight. So therefore, I want to eliminate the time of the bit. So we begin with this equation here, which was the X component uh, equation for the for the position. And we put the time T equal to this. T equal to X minus X naught divided by V naught cosine theta naught. Means we just solve this for the time, okay? What we will do just by doing one more step here, like assuming that the X naught and Y naught was zero so that the equation can look a little bit simple, we're just putting the X naught and Y naught equal to zero. We put this into for the time in this equation as well as for the time here, okay? And then solve it. This will be our another equation for the projectile motion, which we will be using, and that will be mostly used in the situation when we know the initial theta x and y component, but no time. And this is also one of the uh, good equations. So without going into the further details, um, one, one equation which is quite obvious and extremely needed because a lot of problems will be based on this, pro this equation which we are deriving just on this slide. So here we are talking about the range. Can someone tell what the range means here? Like when you are shooting your your gun, what do you mean by range? Like my gun Max, has more range. Maximum height. Maximum height. Maximum height. height. Okay. Someone else. That's one. Maximum, yeah, that's, uh, delta y. The maximum vertical distance before it hits the ground. Okay. Yeah. That's. And, that's another, I mean horizontal. Horizontal. Horizontal maximum. distance. That's that's right. So. The, the maximum horizontal distance that your gun is able to shoot, that is called the range, okay? So here we will be discussed about the range, which will be beginning from the origin where you are standing to the point where the bullet went into, okay? The bullet finally landed. So what is common between your height, which is you were initially here, and when the bullet is finally coming in, what is the Y component for the both cases? Y. How much is the Y there? Zero. Zero it's the same. The initial is the same as the final, but yes. the different uh, signs. Okay. 
So the initial initial y and the final y are the same. This is very good point. And also, if we consider that the initial y was zero, where I'm standing, and I consider that origin the y is zero. So the finally, when the bullet landed, it will be also considered zero. So based on that information, we are beginning. So x equal to v naught cosine theta. We are just taking it from the x and we are replacing this x by r. OK, that's all we did in that equation. And for the y, we put it zero because the bullet just hit back the ground. Therefore, the y is zero for that case. We are considering it an origin. So those were the two equations, guys. Remember that x equal to v naught cosine theta naught times t. This was one equation. And second equation was v naught sine theta naught t minus half gt squared, OK? So y is 0 because the bullet landed back at the ground at the same height. And the x, we are considering it the range, which is r. So what we will do, we will be going into the time again and we'll be removing the time. So we determine the time from this equation, which is the second equation, and put it in the first equation here. So the, the final equation, what we get is this, okay? After solving it, this is the final equation we get. So if you look at the equation, the range, it depends on the initial speed at which you fired the bullet. It depends on that. And second, uh, it depends on the angle at which you are pointing. So if you pointed your rifle at 45 degree, so two times 45 will be 90. And sine 90 is? Sine of 90 degrees. Is one, is one. Is one. one. And, and you, we know that the, the sine 90, it gives us the maximum value for the sine theta. There is nothing other, no other angle will give us more than one. So the one is obviously the maximum uh, we, which we can get from the sine theta. So therefore, if I point my rifle at 45 degree and my rifle is also capable to produce the good initial speed, then my range will be maximum. OK, so this is all for the derivation and sometimes uh, derivations could be a little bit uh, boring, but that, that was all. If you have any question in the derivations, you can ask now. Otherwise, we are getting into the problems. Can you go back, please? Yes. Yes. Uh, how how we get the the last uh, equation? How did we get the last equation? Yes. Okay. Uh, up to this point, are you convinced? Up to this point, do you know how did we get this? These are uh, the old equations, right? This is yeah. This is the old equation we started from here, and then what we did, we divided both sides by v naught cosine theta naught. Okay, we divided both sides by this. So this is the equation we get from it. Okay. Now look at the the board here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Here, look at the board. So, why? is equal to v naught sine theta naught. And here we are, what we are putting is that the, the value of the time, which will be x divided by v naught cosine theta naught, okay? Half gx divided by v naught cosine theta naught, okay? That's what we have. Because here is uh, the last uh, the time was squared, so therefore the, the terms here we, we will get will be the square terms. Okay, v naught v naught cancels out, and what do you get from the sine divided by cosine theta? Tan. Tangent theta. So x tangent theta naught minus half g x square divided by v naught square cosine square theta naught, okay? This is this is how we get the, the final answer. We just eliminated a time between the two. Okay. Here, uh, F yes. Teacher, teacher. Yeah. I'm having a problem, not sure why. Uh, I can't, op 
I can't open your camera on full screen, so I can't really see the board. I don't know if I'm the only one that have this issue. If you click on double click on the cameras, uh, uh, I window. I tried. It's okay, still not, not working. Okay. Pin it, pin it, pin it. Oh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. host, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. A fly ball is hit to the outfield. During its flight, ignore the effect of the air. What happens to its horizontal and vertical components of velocity? Can someone tell? If you hit a ball to the outfield, during its flight, we are ignoring the air resistance, okay? So what will happen to its horizontal component of the velocity as well as vertical component of the velocity? Uh, the the, the horizontal will be constant. The velocity horizontal the... will be constant because there is no acceleration. And what about the vertical component? It will, it will be uh, accelerate uh, according to the gravity, I think. Yes, so the, based on the gravity, the vertical component, the velocity will be changed. So the second part of the problem is what are the horizontal vertical components of its acceleration during ascent, during descent, and at the topmost point of the flight? So how much is the acceleration during its entire flight? That's what it, in short it means. Uh, acceleration For horizontal. Yeah. For horizontal, it's always zero. It is zero, always zero. Ascent, descent, and, and the topmost point, it is zero. How about the um, the vertical component? Negative 9.8. 9.8, yeah. 9 .8, 9 .8, yeah. It is 9.8. It doesn't matter whether the object goes upward, either the, coming downward, or at the topmost point, OK? I mean, the, the sign makes a difference. If it's coming downwards, it's not going to be negative, is it? Uh, because oh. here you will see, you will see what, what we are doing, OK? So this is the answer for the initial and the final velocities. And here you have the uh, X component of the acceleration zero for the entire part, for the entire journey. Now, when you are going towards the ascent, you are getting, getting minus 9.8 just because we are putting it in this way, OK? And here for the descent, we are also getting in the same way. For the topmost point, we are also getting the same. So regarding your answer, when uh, sometimes the confusion cause, uh, comes in because there are a lot of books which takes if object goes upward, they are taking not minus G. When the object comes downward, they are taking positive G. And this is just the book's convention. For our holiday Riznik crane, we are eliminating that confusion. We are saying that the acceleration for the entire flight is 9.8. For the entire journey, what we do, we put the negative in front of G. So the G is out. So for the rest of the entire journey, we will be considering G equal to 9.8. We are not considering the plus and minus signs for the G in the flight. Uh, teacher. Yes. If, uh, if it's coming down, should we consider velocity being negative as in yes. it's going yes. downwards? So, yeah, so here the, the main the main reference point will be this. If you are here on the uh, at a platform, let's say at the ground and you are hitting something upward. So for that, your your uh, um, the the uh, displacement as well as the velocity will be positive because you are hitting something upward. If you are at the platform, you are throwing something downward. For that, the value of the the displacement as well as velocity will be negative because it goes towards minus y. So based on that, we decide plus y and minus y uh, are the plus vy and minus vy, and that will be our way of dealing with these things. All right. Okay, so someone is eating and the plates we are hearing here. Okay, guys, so we are also hang hungry. So just uh, keep the, the the mic a little bit mute. So we are getting into the problems now, and this is the first problem we are solving. In this figure, a rescue plane flies at 198 km per hour, which is equal to 55 meters per second. 
and constant height because the plane is keeping a constant height there, which is 500 meter towards a point directly over a victim where a rescue capsule is to land. What should be the angle? This angle angle of the pilot's line of sight to the victim when the capsule is released. So this is the plane here. It is coming. It is going straight. OK, so it is releasing the capsule and you saw the, see that the capsule path is a projectile path. But since the pro, when the when the pilot is looking at the vectum, it is not a projectile path. It is just a straight path for the eye sight. It is the straight path because there's the the, the path taken by the light. And for the for the capsule as it goes, it is the projectile motion. So our concern here is how much is this angle, which is the pi, OK, which is the line of sight for the, uh, the, 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 the pilot. And this is the pi they are discussing here. So look at the first step, how we are handling it. Can someone tell what will be our initial starting point? How we can handle it? We uh, so we first look at the horizontal and see and how much time it will take to reach uh, 500 meters. OK, that's a one good point. Can you have a trigonometric function which combines this height with this distance and let's name this distance to be called X. Can do you have any trigonometric function which combines this X and this H? Uh, which one it is? Someone said it. Tangent. OK, so here we, we are beginning with the tangent, OK? Tangent pi is equal to the opposite divided by adjacent. So the opposite is x and adjacent is h. So this is my initial starting point for that. OK. Now I also want to to know that how much this this will be taking the time from the the, the position of the the plane to the victim. And that is the distance X. So if I look at the problem, I see that I know the H is 500, which is uh, needed in this problem, but the X is not known. So I need to work for the X. And you know that when we discuss the projectile motion, we said X is equal to V naught cosine theta naught times T. This was our equation. When the projectile which is in this case is the risk you get when this capsule was released at that instant of time. Do you know how much angle it was making uh, with respect to the horizontal? If this is the plane, OK, Zero. it goes along the X axis Zero. and the, the capsule is released. So at that moment when it is just released, how much angle it is making with respect to X axis? 90 zero. zero zero so theta theta naught is zero okay so we when i put the theta naught zero cosine zero is giving me one so i get v naught t okay that's one of the equation i get now for this journey as i'm looking at i have this uh height formula which is i'm using the the y component for it so why why not y minus y naught equal to v naught sine theta naught times t half minus half g t square. OK, so we already know that theta naught is zero and sine zero is zero. So therefore, the first term is neglected. OK. And y. When the capsule just hits the, uh, the, the water, so right there are the length right there. We consider y to be zero. So y is zero minus how much is y not? Can someone tell? 500. 500. So it is 500 equal to minus half 9.8 times t square, and we need to work for the t square. Okay. 
the t square we is the only unknown in this equation and that's what we are going to determine in order to put back that in the equation number two so the t is going to be 1000 because i multiply both sides with two and divide by 9.8 and then i'm taking the square root of this okay so we are getting some value which i don't know uh, how much it is so let's me see the values for the time which is 10.1 seconds okay this is the value after the calculation we are going to put this in here okay so x equal to v naught t we now know how much is the time we already know it can you tell from the problem how much is v naught 55 meter per second yeah 55 meter per second times 10.1 seconds so the second will sec cancel with it and we get it to be uh, something like a 55 five, right meter so 555 approximately that's what we are getting the answer here then in this problem we know x, we know h. h is given in the problem, x we calculated here. The only unknown is pi. So we will put the, the value of x in the equation one and take the tangent inverse. So 10 inverse and here 555 five, five meter divided by height, which is 500. Meter will cancel with the meter, and then we get the value. Uh, how much is that? 48. 48. Okay, so that is 48. 48. 48 degree we got for the pi. Do you have any question here? Uh, so, Doctor, the yeah. weight of the capsule does yeah. not matter in this. Yeah, the weight doesn't matter. If you, if you are able to uh if there was a vacuum let's say and a vacuum if you release the entire earth versus a feather both of them will hit the another planet on which you are landing it at once okay uh, i have a question yeah should we write uh, in the vertical uh, distance uh, instead of uh, 500, should we write uh, negative 500 because is it uh, because it's in the negative y axis? Uh, if you look at the the way in which I explained it, if you go component by component, you will not be last. So here we have the y minus y naught, and the equation on the right side. When the capsule hits the ground, you know the y is zero, right? This is zero, right? Yes, yes. And from which height it was released, it was 500. OK, so therefore we are getting the negative 500. This is one um, uh, consideration. It comes naturally from the equation. But if you were so comfortable with everything, the derivation and everything, all you need to discuss now, as I mentioned to other students who asked the question, since the airplane is flying upward the, at the height and it is releasing all things to the ground. So when it goes towards the ground, we take the displacement negative. So if you are comfortable with the equation and don't come across the y minus y naught, the um, equation, then all you need to do is that here we have displacement, you think it is downward and therefore I'm taking negative uh, value for that. So negative 500, you got it? Yes, but I mean, uh, does that will make the angle different? It will uh, means angle. Yeah. The angle, the angle doesn't has anything to do with the with the uh, sign of the displacement, right? But uh, if the tan inverse was to negative uh, x instead of x, the angle will be different. Oh, there is. Okay, you mean there, because 
Yes. And here you need to be consistent. Why you can take it negative x? Because the object, if you this was your origin, then all things go in the right direction. This is your x and this is your y. So based on that, we are placing everything. But if instead you consider the origin here, and this was the, the way of flight, then you also know that the sign of other parameter will also change accordingly because things the, the plane will be flying to the negative side then, right? Yes, yes, but uh, I mean, uh, what if we consider the origin is the first place of the airplane? Yeah, this, okay. So, uh, so theta, if it's uh, five, if it was uh, 48, so is 48 is above the x-axis? Okay, okay, I got you. I think you're you are considering this point here. The angle that what we consider it is they are asking is in the problem okay they are saying what should be the angle pi of the pilots line up side to the vectors okay so we know the vector is downward and the the pilot line up side is this so the angle they are talking about it is definitely with respect to the vertical axis but if they change the wording and they say what is the angle of the pilot with respect to its line of flight it is the direction it is going to the, the, uh, to, the uh, to the line of sight to the vector. So they will just definitely mean this angle then. Then what we need to do is 90 minus 48. That will be our answer. Okay. Okay, I get it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. There is another a part of this problem is the capsule reaches the water. What is the what is its vector velocity v in the unit vector notation and in the magnitude uh, angle notation? Uh, teacher, I have a question, please. Yeah. Uh, now, why do we put uh, a theta naught as zero? Theta naught is zero because because you know that when the capsule is released, you know that the if you are going in your car in the fast speed and you release something into the air, if you notice that that thing for the very short time of uh, it will just go along the direction of the your car. OK, it will be not falling directly down to the ground, right? Is yes. this your observation? Nice. OK, so therefore the initial angle it is making it is the same is the flight direction. The angle is zero. Oh, OK, thank you so much. OK, so in this part here, the X component of the velocity we already calculated in the previous part. No need to work for this, but for the Y component, we need to definitely work here. And this is what we are getting. So VY, right? We, we derive this equation equal to V naught Y, right? V naught Y minus GT. This is our starting equation. And for the V naught Y, we know it is V naught sine theta naught, but since the angle is zero, therefore this component is going to be zero. When it hits the ground, we know that the total time the capsule took to hit the ground was 10.1 seconds. We put that and the total um, velocity component we get for the Y is minus 99. Do you see why we are getting minus 99 here? It will again justify what the discussion we were uh, having in the previous slide. Minus 99, why we have minus 99 here? Uh, because it's down to the because, down X axis. Yeah, exactly. So with respect to the plane, the, the, the capsule was going downward, which is in the negative Y direction. That's why we are getting the negative component for the velocity. So what will be the total velocity? We know that the X component plus the Y component, and that's what we get the unit vector notations. For the, for the magnitude and angle, I think we did this drill in, the, uh, in chapter three. You know that, how do we get the magnitude? The X component square plus the Y component square under square root, and the theta we get it from the tangent, okay? Tangent inverse Y component the velocity divided by the X component of the velocity it will give us. OK. Let me jump into this second problem here. Please read the statement because I'm asking some questions. This.
A projectile is thrown from the ground into the air with an initial velocity, initial speed V0. Its velocity, 1.5 seconds after it was thrown, is 42.3 meter per second, making an angle of 30.4 degree above the horizontal. Determine the initial velocity V0 of the projectile. Okay, we want to determine the initial velocity, but we don't know a lot of things. How do we determine the X component and how do we determine the Y component? Those are our first questions to ask. How do we determine the X component? What is the equation for that? Uh, uh, v times uh, cosine theta. Okay, so V naught X is equal to V naught cosine theta naught. This is the equation we got used, right? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, this is uh, the T is not there. Okay. This is the equation we got used to. But we know, as we accepted in the previous directions, that there is no acceleration in the X direction. So it does not matter whether I know the initial speed and initial angle, or I know the f another speed at any other moment and the angle associated with that. This is going to be exactly the same for me for the X component because it is constant. The value of the theta and the V may change, but when you make the product of them, it will be always the same. So therefore I'm putting them V is 42.3 cosine and the angle I'm putting is 30.4. So this one will give me the X component. Now, <clears throat> you guys can calculate this. Now I need to proceed to the Y component. For the Y component, we know the equation is V naught Y minus GT. This is the equation. And I will put this here as because I don't know this, right? Because I'm interested in the initial velocities, but I don't know this. But I definitely know this, which is V sine theta. V naught Y minus GT. I will be rearranging this equation. V naught Y equal to V sine theta plus GT. Do we have the values for all the parameters on the right side? Yes. 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 OK, so 42.3 sine 30.4 plus 9.8 times the time is given. 1.5. 1.5 seconds. So it will give us the Y component. I know the X component from here, and I determine the Y component from here. Once I know them, I can determine the magnitude, which will be the X component square plus Y component square under square root. The Pythagoras theorem we apply here. Doctor, so, yes. The G in the second equation, Y is uh, it's plus. This one? No, no. This, uh, the last, this yeah. Because you see that I started from negative sign. Vy equal to V naught Y equal to sorry, minus GT. This is the equation, right? But I'm interested in the V naught. So what I did, I added GT to both sides, this side and this side. So on the left side, now I have V naught Y instead of VY, I have V naught Y. You see it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's why we get the plus sign here. Any other question? Uh, teacher, yeah. Uh, why we can't uh, consider V not as zero, as you said, thrown from the ground? Uh, please say this again. Can I consider uh, V not as zero? V not you cannot consider zero. If you consider V not zero, then your object will not fly. Right? It, it flies just because of the initial velocity. Okay. And you know that the, 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 in this problem, look at this uh, entire uh, solution there. 
Once we determine the X component and the Y component and apply the Pythagoras theorem, then the V naught we are getting it 51.3, which is not zero. If we consider zero, our answer will be incorrect. Okay. Uh, guys, I think the, the time is up, but this is one good problem. I also uh, tucked in in the slides there. This is a very good problem. Uh, there are two solutions. One solution is the way in which it is solved, and another solution is that when you consider all the parameters from the initial perspective, from the from the starting point here. So the solution will look a little bit different in the derivation, uh, but that will uh, be giving you the same answer of, uh, like as you are getting here. The way in which this problem was solved for the first part, they are considering right from this point. They are just dropping this object to the ground and solving it for that. But if you start with the initial velocity and the total equation like this, so in that case you will have V naught sine theta naught times T. If you put those all the equations together, you will get exactly the same answer like this. OK, and also the final answer you will also get the same way. Both ways are fine. You can proceed with this or that. It's up to you. Now I open the file. You guys uh, just uh, go to the. Um, to the top tab, like as I've shown you before. And uh, record your attendance. Doctor, I did. Uh, I did, I it, did uh, it the first of the class. OK, so I, I had opened it from the beginning of the class. So if some student have not done it, Please do it now. And if you did it, two uh, times. yes, the beginning and now. <laughs> no, no, yeah, once once is fine until for some reason I ask another time. OK, uh, thank yeah. you. See you next week. Have a good weekend, sir. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy your weekend. You Come too, fresh, too. OK? Yeah. <laughs> Tisha, thank I have you. a question. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I hope. Are we going to continue this chapter next week? Yeah, next week in the uh, hopefully on Sunday we might be able to finish it. If you were the students were understanding the rotational motion well, because there's a little bit new concepts we are bringing in. If you were able to finish that, uh, then we will uh, continue with the revisions afterward. Yes, what is your question so that I can answer? Uh, doctor, yeah, on Monday we have chapter three quiz, right? Monday, the, the quiz will be in chapter three, which is the vectors. Yes. All right. Thank you. Are you also guys uh, able to access your Wiley Plus assignment, which is related to chapter four? No. OK, like a, it's a homework. Uh, I don't it see is it. a homework. It is a homework. It is due on midnight on Saturday. But the uh, don't wait until that because there is still that uh, problem of the time mismatch, which we couldn't figure it out. So try to do it today or tomorrow. Uh, hopefully the Saturday. Doctor. Yeah. Can you make the quizzes uh, on uh, Thursday next week? Because uh, next Thursday week. Thursday week is, is off, is, right? National Monday, Thursday. There is no class on Thursday, right? Yes. Day. Yeah, because that's a national holiday. Enjoy. Go outside for the concerts and music. <laughs> OK. <laughs> we got um, after the national day. For, for yeah. after the national day, there, there, is a, there is the coordinated assignment, which was already announced. I think that is on 27, yes, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. so in, yeah. that will be in the first four chapters already. Yeah. Uh, professor. Yeah. Doctor, uh, the past exam we did on Wiley, I do not see it, so I'm not sure if I... The quiz? Yeah, the quiz. The quiz, uh, right after taking the quiz, I sent out an email. I said the quiz is cancelled. And then the... Doctor, not everyone received that email. I didn't receive your email about that. Check your spam folder because I sent it from the from the Blackboard, okay? And if you have that in the spam, then that might be one of the issues. But that, that, uh, uh, that quiz number two is canceled because there were technical issues which we were seeing uh, as, uh, during the quiz, and a lot of students were unable to finish their quiz on time, so which created a trouble. So I wanted to cancel that now. So what's going to be the substitute for it? 
Or, there is are, you, uh, are you gonna uh, let it slide? Like that, quiz number two is gone. The quiz two, which we will be taking now, it will be in chapter three in your recitation. Mm, okay. yeah. yeah, so we will have <laughs> enough quizzes. Don't worry about that. At least uh, it may go to 10 quizzes or so. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. If I if I do mistakes in uh, the assignment, yeah, it will, it will affect on my grade, the final grade. I mean, the assignments. Yes, the assignments. It will be counted also towards your final grades because uh, in the classwork I will be taking the quizzes plus assignments. Okay. But that being said, don't pressurize yourself such that you just go and ask other one what is the solution and if you do that you will be able to get the grades in the in the uh, homework yeah. but later on when you are taking the coordinated exams or the final exams you may lose ground in that so this is the learning steps the quizzes and the assignments these are the learning steps uh, try to put yourself in the situation that you are in exam and you are handling it alone 